So Jeb Bush is on CNN, I guess that must have been, right, with Jake Tapper, responding to Donald Trump. Now, Donald Trump, what was his initial uh, tweet? Basically, just like, I don't know why Jeb is bragging about his brother because 9-11 happened on his watch. Look, this is not controversial. For those of you who have no ability to add or no sense of the calendar or zero sense of history and don't have Google, but somehow have the ability to listen to this program, what happens after an election? There was an election in 2000. Now, let's not get into the specifics of it because then I'm going to get really annoyed. But let's just say the outcome was that George Bush was appointed president. He took office in January of 2001. It was probably January 20th, although I'm not going to look it up. That's generally when it happens. He takes office. He served in office for the next, well, many years, but in fact had continuously fulfilled, arguably fulfilled his obligations as president, certainly maintained the title until September. And then in September, on September 11th, there was a terrorist atta attack on this country. 3,000 people died. He was president when that happened. So it happened on his watch. Just a reminder, there was a document. Now, there was actually a lot more than just this document. We know that. We know that as early as January 20th of that year, the National Security Advisor for the Clinton administration participated in a hand the baton program with the National Security Advisor of the Bush administration, Condi Rice. And the National Security Advisor at that time, Sandy Berger, said the number one threat facing the incoming administration are non-state terrorist actors. Remember, this is just literally weeks after they had stopped the millennial bomber who had come in through Canada ostensibly to blow up something on the West Coast. And simultaneously, there was a panel that I think it was Rudman and Gary Hart were running on the 21st century threats to the United States, and they were determining also that it was non-state actors. Well, when Condi Rice got up right after Sandy Berger, who had just basically passed the baton, she sort of lifted, the, reached out into like a parallel universe and received apparently a different baton and said that the primary threat facing the United States were people like Saddam Hussein. State actors. And then we know that Richard Clark, the counterterrorism czar under the Clinton administration, carried through to the uh, Bush administration, said his hair was on fire at this time, over the summer, because of the enormous amount of chatter, as they say. And this culminated in a document handed to George Bush entitled, Bin Laden Determined to Strike in U.S., which explains that Bin Laden was determined to strike in the U.S. Not at the U.S., not the U.S., in U.S., So it's fairly uncontroversial that this happened under George Bush's watch, that he certainly had enough warning to take extra precautions, that he certainly had the means, right? I mean, he was president and controlled the national security apparatus to the best of my knowledge. Maybe something else was going on.